So last year, Microsoft's fresh new Surface Go tablet proved itself a more than worthy alternative to your iPads and your Galaxy tabs with some handy accessories that could turn it into a makeshift laptop or a sketching pad in a jiffy. And in 2020, Microsoft is back with an updated model unsurprisingly called the Surface Go 2, which packs a few little tweaks here and there to improve the overall experience. And the tablet itself will cost you just 300 quid here in the UK, although that price does start to skyrocket somewhat when you factor in the likes of the Surface Go type cover, the mouse, the pen, all that shenanigans. Anywho, I've been using the Surface Go 2 for the last week and here is my full in-depth review and for more than the latest greatest tech please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now the Surface Go 2 is a dinky 10.5 incher, ideal for carrying about the place all day long. It's so compact that you can slap it in a decent sized handbag, never mind a backpack or whatever else. The tablet itself weighs just over half a kilo, while slapping on that Surface Go type cover only adds a tiny little bit of extra weight and girth. But even with that cover slapped on there, the Surface Go 2 is an incredibly slim and light device. It's great news for weedy exercise dodgers like myself who don't want to lug around a big cumbersome heavy machine all day. And as an added bonus, the Surface Go type cover will even help protect that screen from damage, completely covering it during transport. Plus, while the tablet itself is only available in this rather dull sort of silvery metallic finish, that poppy red cover really helps to brighten up the overall design. That colour is proven rather divisive though, I personally quite like it, but other members of my family have commented that it looks, and I quote, cack. But even if you too fall into the cack category, no worries, you can also grab that type cover in a much more sedate ice blue. The surface of that cover is a soft touch felt material as usual, while the keys are straight up plastic. And as long as you've got a flat surface to work with, the Surface Go 2 once again proves a comfortable enough typing experience. It's nice and simple and straightforward, all you've got to do is bodge out your kickstand on the back of the Surface Go like so, and then you're basically ready for action. I know this obviously isn't an ideal setup, especially when you're actually forced to work off your lap, in which case it just gets a bit awkward and uncomfortable. But I do actually rather like that Surface Go type cover. It still works really well. You've got a good bit of distance when you're hitting the key, so a good bit of feedback. And the board itself is just about spacious enough that I found I could get a decent speed while touch typing. And those keys are even backlit as well, so you can beaver away in the evenings, you massive workaholic you. I did have one little issue though, which seemed to be a connectivity issue, where it's not quite 100% seamless between the keyboard and the tablet, so I'd be feverishly banging away, and uh, I'd go back, look over my last couple of paragraphs, and just one or two little letters might have been missed out, so I'd have to go back and stick those in. And of course, if you do want that cover, be prepared to stump up a further 129 quid on top of the cost of the tablet. Not exactly pocket change. And if nothing gets you going, like a strong bit of ports action, well, Surface Go 2 probably isn't going to make your nipples too tingly because like most tablets, it's not exactly super hot in that area. Although to be fair, you do get a proper USB-C port as well as a micro SD slot for expanding the 128 gigs of onboard storage. And there's also a headphone jack and Microsoft's very own Surface Connect power port for fast charging shenanigans. For the more security conscious of you, you get Windows S pre-installed on the Surface Go 2, but of course, as always, you can upgrade that to the full fat version and then get downloading all the dodgy your software from the internet if you like. And either way, you've got full Windows Hello support as well, so you can unlock the Surface Go 2 just using the webcam and your gorgeous mug. Now, 5 megapixel webcam does a great job for Skype calls, Zoom chats, things like that as well. It captures your mug in a startling amount of detail, even in quite low light ambient situations. And as you can see here, a little light pops to life alongside that webcam when it is in use as well. So although there's no sort of privacy shield or anything, at least you know when you are being filmed. And you've also got a dual mic setup as well for better audio clarity when you are on a Skype or a Zoom call, and that can help to just reduce the background noise as well, so I had no trouble being heard, even with a rowdy session of Teen Titans Go or something going on just behind me. And you've also still got that 8 megapixel rear camera slapped on the back of the Surface Go 2 as well for reasons, and I still maintain that if you take photos or video with a tablet, there's a special section of purgatory reserved just for you. As for the actual screen, well, it's a slightly larger 10.5 inch pixel sense screen this time around, compared with the 10 inch of the original Surface Go. Not much of a growth, but that extra half an inch can be quite satisfying. <clears throat> it's not really any sharper than before at 220 pixels per inch, but it's absolutely fine for kicking back with an HD movie or getting busy with a creative app. Colours are reasonably natural and once again impressive brightness levels on that maximum setting too, so you've got no worries seeing this thing when you're set outside, although the contrast could admittedly be a bit better. You've also got Dolby Power 2 watt stereo speakers, which are super loud on that top volume, considering the Surface Go 2 is a bit of a tiddler. It's not great quality audio of course, but you do have a headphone jack and reliable Bluetooth support if you do want to stream music while 
called Beaver and Away on that werewolf romance novel. The cheapest model of the Surface Go 2 comes with an Intel Pentium Gold chipset stuffed inside, although you can upgrade that to an 8th gen Intel Core M3 chipset if you like, and that comes back by either 4 or 8 gigs of RAM. And my review model was the Pentium Gold cheaper model, although it did come with a full 8 gigabytes of RAM, although even so I did find performance was a little bit stuttery here and there, especially when working on Chrome with a few different tabs open. Occasionally I'd be scrolling through a web page or whatever and the go to would stutter just a little bit, just trying to catch up. Uh, it's a little bit disconcerting, but nothing too annoying. Sadly, even recent games that aren't too demanding, like Risk of Rain 2, are stuttery to the point of being unplayable, regardless of whether you drop the graphics settings all the way down, so you'll definitely have to go proper old school if you fancy a game and fix. If you're a bit of a benchmark geek, well, Cinebench 20 spat out a very modest score of 323. Geekbench was just as modest as well, a very simple score of 371 for single core and 953 for the multi-core. So that basically just confirms that yes, the performance is definitely basic. As for the internet connectivity, well, you've got the option of LTE support if you want to stay connected wherever you roam, although of course you'll have to stump up for a data contract as well. But as for the Wi-Fi, I found that worked perfectly well for me. Stayed at a strong, stable connection even when I buggered off out into the garden in rare moments of sunshine. As for the 128 gig SSD, this offers up typical speeds for a tablet-style device. You get under two gigabits per second read speeds and under half a gigabit per second write speed so compared with laptops it is slow but absolutely fine for everyday tasks. And Microsoft reckons that the battery life has improved for this all new Surface Go jobby but I found that I still got around 6 to 8 hours of mixed use per charge same as I did with last year's model. And that mixed use basically involved working in Chrome often while streaming audio although I found that I got the same sort of battery life result if I just said f*** it all right off and sat on my ass watching Netflix. And that right there is what I think of Microsoft's fresh new Surface Go 2. As you can see not really much of an upgrade over the original ones so if you've got last year's model, there's no point in grabbing this one. But if you don't have a Go tablet of your very own, it is lovely, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of traveling and you still want to have that full Windows experience. The performance is limited, but the flexibility and that portability are absolutely stunning indeed. But of course, as I say, if you do want to stump up for all the accessories and everything as well, to start to bump that price rather high. So that's what I think. But have you been using the Surface Go 2? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments as well. Leave your own mini review. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do post subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.